Don't wait. Reserve your copy of the Cyberfuck Blood Honey Mugshot variant now. Link below. <laughs> Why do they do this? What? Ugh. All right. Welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. I'm Ethan Van Skyver, 30-year veteran of the comic book industry, 20 of those years at DC Comics, and I think, you know, um, most well-known, best-known uh, for having worked on Green Lantern during that time period, restoring Hal Jordan to the Green Lantern mythos, creating the emotional spectrum, really adding weight and substance to Sinestro, and making him one of their top villains. Uh, they've undone that whole thing, by the way, with Sinestro. That's been completely destroyed, as is evident in this book here. Um, this is uh, put on your reading spectacles, put on your bifocals, because you're going to have to uh, do that in order to figure out uh, what comic this is, because this is a DC comic book in 2023. So the fine print says Night Terror's Green Lantern, uh, and over here it says DC number one. Uh, okay, <clears throat> I don't know what happened. I mean, you know, during the entire existence of comic books, um, <laughs> comics had big trade dress logos across the top here that really invited you to get excited about the book. You, you knew what the Amazing Spider-Man logo looked like. You knew what the Batman logo, the, the Green Lantern logo, you knew how to find them on the racks just because the big, huge, bold lettering and the maybe the little subtitles and the blurbs, you know, uh, can't wait to see what Hal Jordan's gotten himself into uh, this month. That's all gone now as though that were a problem. It really wasn't a problem, guys. I, I don't I don't know what this is. Is this some kind of police filing system? Like, what is this? What's with the micro lettering here? There's all of this space that could have been used to say Green Lantern, Night Terrors, and it could have been very exciting. All right, so uh, this is Night Terrors from what I understand. And by the way, uh, it is terrifying already. I'm like, wait a second. This is Green Lantern. Why is the cover red? Ah. It's already spooky, like it already doesn't make any sense, right? Something's definitely wrong here. Uh, we'll find out inside the book. Um, <clears throat> Night Terrors, DC comic event in, in which, from what I understand, there's a villain named Insomnia who's going around and putting uh, everyone to sleep. Uh, and I put it to you that that's DC Comics itself. Uh, DC Comics is Insomnia, putting everybody to sleep. And the mutual nightmare that we're all sharing is a world without uh, comic books. Uh, because that's where we're heading right now, okay? Uh, that is that is where we're heading with this um, very uninspired stuff that is coming out. And by the way, it's not everybody's fault because there's some really decent work in here. Uh, this is a nice cover by Dustin Yen. Uh, very simple and the kind of um, style made popular by artists like him and um, uh, Francis. Uh, oh, what's his name? Shoot. Man, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I must be getting old because... Um, I'm forgetting things. I'm forgetting names and stuff. You know, what's his name? Uh, his initials are FM, and he was drawing the Flash, I think, after me. Francis Manipul. Gee whiz, Ethan. Come on. Francis Manipul. Uh, in that style, which is, um, uh, you know, very pleasing, very simple. Um, but the book itself is completely uninspired. Now, um, what's happening here is DC Comics is scrambling to find... Uh, another horror event in in the same vein as Marvel Zombies, which was amazingly successful and huge, uh, or um, DC. We did Blackest Night, and uh, I had I had a lot of creative input um, for Blackest Night. I designed the Black Lanterns and all that stuff. That was an amazingly successful uh, event, and so horror events um, really do work. They did DC Metal, I think it was called. And all these kind of spinoffs of metal. I don't even know how long metal went on. Too long, probably. But uh, that was another horror, dystopian, bizarre, creepy nightmare uh, event that just went on and probably just printed money for DC Comics. Uh, Scott Snyder and uh, Greg Capullo at the helm. Uh, Todd McFarlane making a ton of just, I mean, I'm sorry. They're pretty, but they're worthless action figures. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't want all these weird uh, versions of Batman and the Joker. There are way too many of those. Uh, but anyway, DC is trying to find something um, like that again. And they had a an event recently called DC, to get it, Deceased, uh, which is very clever. The, the name was indeed clever, but it was just Marvel zombies uh, all over again. Uh, this is uh, another attempt to do that. This is a company, like a line-wide event in which all their heroes go to sleep and they face their nightmares. And I guess the villain insomnia is supposed to glean something from that and find some ultimate weapon in the nightmare sphere. Who cares? That's all a MacGuffin. The point, uh, <laughs> the whole point of this is to see what DC heroes are afraid of. Um, what I'm afraid of is this card, ga card game here, Dual Force. 
every single one of these characters here. You got Cyborg looking like he's being sodomized against his will. Uh, Flash looks like he's being sodomized against his will. Wonder Woman, I'm not so sure. Like, if she is, she's she's cool with it. And then you've got Batman, who also looks like he's being sodomized against his will. I don't know why it's so hard to just draw these characters looking cool. Um, all right, anyway. <laughs> uh, here we go. Hal Jordan, Carol, they, they're in an airplane. You know this is a dream already, so you're not worried. Um, if Hal Jordan were in an airplane that were going down, he would just take the plane apart with his uh, ring and rescue Carol and fly them both to safety. Instead, he chooses to try to force his way into the cockpit. Uh, and uh, lo and behold, on the uh, other end of the cockpit door uh, is a funeral. Uh, here we have an opportunity for DC Comics to, um, to state once again, very clearly, Hal Jordan is Jewish. Um, Hal Jordan is Jewish. Why? Uh, in 2015, they, they kind of just decided that Hal's mother... Uh, is Jewish. Uh, there have been a few references in the past to him uh, being kind of Jewish, um, but really uh, all of this is kind of happening, I think, because Hal Jordan, DC Comics has painted itself into a corner uh, in a time period, 2023, um, when all of their characters need to be marginalized uh, in some way. Uh, Hal Jordan, listen, he's a Republican, he's conservative. He's the Chuck Yeager of comics. We know all this because of, uh, you know, they decided to use this character as a punchline, you know, back in the 1970s when they had a book called uh, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, uh, in which Green Arrow and Green Lantern would bicker at each other. Uh, Green Arrow being the heroic liberal and Hal Jordan being kind of the backwards, uh, kind of hapless conservative who was just like, dude, what? People need rights? Uh, and then that would uh, grant <laughs> that would give uh, Green Arrow uh, the opportunity to just scream at him with like spittle flecked uh, with a spittle flecked mouth, just yelling at his partner, veins popping out of his neck, calling him a Nazi, calling him stupid. Uh, and Hal just stood there and took it. Uh, I don't know why he never did. He ever punch Ollie? He should have just decked him. Uh, but in any case, uh, listen, uh, he is a Republican. He's a conservative Republican. And that really, I, I really do believe that does bother DC. Uh, so they, they decided, oh, yeah, well, he's, uh, he's Jewish. Uh, so here he is. He's got his little yarmulke on. Uh, he is, uh, I mean, after all, you know, he was designed originally by uh, Gil Kane, who kind of thought he was based on Paul Newman. Um, you know, Paul Newman was in a movie called Exodus, uh, therefore he's Jewish, I guess. Look at him. <clears throat> he's like in brightest mitzvah and darkest shamats. No, no good Nick shall escape my sight. Let Ghanifs who worship Meshuggah's might get for at my power, a green menorah's light. Uh, so he's a Jewish guy. And not only that, like he's not only just Jewish, but he's also a pervert now, according to, um, Grant Morrison. Uh, he is uh, pansexual, uh, which is strange. For anybody who's been reading Green Lantern for uh, more than five seconds, uh, you know that Hal Jordan is very, very uh, heterosexual uh, and really uh, is attracted to the female form. But uh, Graham Morrison is just like, no, no, I'm sure he's put it in a lot of different aliens, uh, and therefore he's uh, probably pansexual. Very strange. So pansexual uh, Jewish guy. Uh, Hal Jordan. And that is uh, where we are right now. Um, all right. So, uh, oh, no. Uh, Hal, when this is his uh, the scary part here is Hal's father is in this coffin after he burned up in his plane accident. And he's going to come out of the coffin and scare Hal. Uh, I don't know why his corpse looks like this. I don't know why. I mean, uh, listen, I like the artwork a lot here. The art is really, really good. Um, but this is this is Martin... This is Martin Jordan here? Really? I don't think that's what he... It's really bizarre. This is bizarre. Um, and uh, then everybody's uh, dead. Who knows? All right. So, run away. All really good. I mean, the artwork is fine. Nothing to be afraid of. Uh, here we have an ad for Night Terror Superman. Uh, chunky looking Superman. Really nice. Nice artwork. More stuff to get excited about. Welcome home, Barry. Uh, so, this is The Flash, I guess. Art by Daniel Bayliss. I always look at who the artists are. Get excited about the art more than anything. Uh, and then Action Comics, Hunted by Cyborg Superman. 
this is a weird piece right here. You know, this is obviously like super photo reference, but doesn't resemble Hal Jordan at all, really. Doesn't doesn't look like Hal Jordan in any way. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, all right, uh, here we have, uh, again, uh, Hal finds himself at Ferris Aircraft, and he's facing... <laughs> He's facing a very bitchy uh, Carol Ferris. And uh, this is just, uh, I, I wish I could have drawn this scene in a way. Like, I don't want to draw this scene, but like, I would have done it a little bit differently. Uh, th there's something in, I, I don't know what the psychological component uh, is uh, in this, but there's something about like men who work in comics who like this idea here of women just on the rag, screaming, leaning in at men, and men being like, what? Like, look at Hal Jordan's physique. Hal Jordan is Justice League. Hal Jordan's a big dude. And Hal Jordan, I'm sure, has been screamed at by a lot of women uh, in his life. But you know what? He's just like, <laughs> all right, uh, that's fine. Yeah, he would stand there very stoically and look at her with a smirk. He would not cringe. He would not sort of, he, he, he's not afraid of Carol. Look at this Look at this bitch. You know, look. Like, what's your problem? And what this is all about is, like, you have an airplane to fix. you got to fix the airplane on time or you're fired and nobody would want you around anyway. So you better fix the airplane. And Hal's like, yeah, yeah. Um, what is this? <laughs> Hal's got, Hal is not going to let a woman. I'm sorry. I, I'm, you know, DC, I know you have your feelings. I know you have your politics, but we've already established that Hal Jordan is a coxman uh, who loves women, but not enough to let this happen. Uh, they're not going to, Hal's probably not going to sort of go, okay, mommy, uh, when Carol uh, is yelling at him like this. And nor would Carol yell at him because, you know, listen, uh, you know, Carol's like, dude, you know, you, you get into, uh, you take a lot of chances, you take a lot of risks and all this stuff. But the thing about Hal is when he takes risks, he it always pays off. Like he wins. He does great. Like he's he's just um he's a gambler who wins. Uh and so he takes risks, but and Carol might be like, boy, you know, you're you sure are. But like she she respects him. Like Carol respects Hal Jordan. Um they have a really, really good kind of sexy um dynamic between the two of them because you know yeah she does own ferris aircraft she's running it and everything and in some cases she's his boss but uh he is like he's like the star athlete okay uh this is just not happening and by the way could we please with this what is he 12 years old i saw this bothered me i mean this is the one thing where i think the uh, the artist fell down a little bit here but this whole like stoic super bitchy like looking down her nose at how i i don't even know is this part of the nightmare that that maybe it's part of the nightmare that Hal is uh, uh, being sort of, um, I don't know, dressed down and disrespected by Carol. But all right. So uh, the other part of the nightmare is he gets in that fuselage or whatever. He gets in that cockpit and uh, it flies away. And then he sees uh, Abin Sir, who is a demon. Oh, look at this Jay Lee artwork. Oh, my God. The great Jay Lee. I'm so glad he's still doing um, covers for DC and Tom King failed uh, to get his, to destroy his life. I'm so grateful for that. Good, good for DC. Uh, and once again, Jay Lee's a hero. He did the cover for Cyberfrog Rock Planet. Much appreciated. Uh, more Night Terrors books. We have uh, Titans featuring a lot of names. I just don't know. I mean, I could be, oh, here's a name I know. Mark Wade uh, and Roger Cruz, art by Roger Cruz, who, Made his bones swiping. Didn't he, like, he was, like, swiping from Joe Matarara. And Joe Matarara got really upset with him uh, back in the 90s. And then we've got uh, Black Adam. A Black Adam book by uh, Jeremy Hahn. I don't know these people. It's weird. You know, I, I haven't been here, uh, haven't been at D.C. since 2018. Haven't really been following them. But, uh, you know... The thing is, when I was there um, for 20 years, I'd see the same names over and over again. I don't, I'm not really seeing too many of those names anymore. These are all kind of newbies. All right, so big deal. So, all right, so uh, now the, the Guardians yell at Hal. Everybody's yelling at Hal. Uh, great facial expression here. I really like this. Uh, this is good. Uh, very reminiscent of uh, Ivan Rice's work. This is like the DC House style. Um, being well done here. Very cool. Very cool. 
And I, I give the uh, the artist props. I mean, these guys have to make something out of these scripts, which are middling. I mean, this isn't a terrible script. It's just, uh, it's just not that, uh, it's not that, it's not that good. Uh, all right, the end of it, here we go. Hal meets Parallax, of course. This is my character. I designed Parallax, and uh, this doesn't look anything like <laughs> Parallax. It looks more like a monkey or something. I don't know. He's meant to look more like a, believe it or not, another kind of insect. He's kind of like based on uh, like bugs and crickets and stuff, cicadas. Uh, all right, so that's this. And then over here, this is disgraceful. Uh, this part's fine. This is good. This isn't good. This is like a backup story because, again, one of the ways that DC Comics is dealing with uh, having um, no work and books not selling is that they're they're cramming a bunch of different creative teams into uh, into books. So, you know, Green Lantern isn't just one story anymore. It's going to be more than one story so that more creative teams can get paid for a book. They can ride off the sales of uh, one single book, which is good, you know, all around for everyone. Like there are more creative creators who are getting work. Uh, the readers, you would think, would get more value uh, because there's more pages uh, in a comic book. Uh, it makes sense. It is a strategy, a, a good strategy for dealing with the severe uh, downturn in the mainstream comic book industry. Um, but uh, then again, you know, you do get work like this. This is uh, Alex Segura, uh, who was uh, he's like an editor at DC when I was there. And then I think he went over to Archie. He was an editor at Archie. And now here he is writing a story pissing all over Sinestro. Uh, Sinestro is a nobody. He doesn't have his ring anymore. He's a, uh, uh, it, it really does seem, oh, and the artwork is really bad too. Uh, it really does seem like Alex is just sort of, uh, he's got 10 pages here to sort of, uh, pee all over, uh, our boy Sinestro, uh, who of course, uh, I made into a, uh, space Hitler <laughs> character <laughs> and I made him so popular. He was so popular. It was great. Uh, so we can't have that anymore. Uh, this art is really bad. I, you know, I'm sorry. I don't usually say anything about the uh, the artist, but yeah, I don't. I I read this and was just like, this is uh, this is not good. What is with this? Here, let me just say a couple of things that, that'll be helpful. Uh, you have a whole page here, and I understand that you want to utilize most of the page to show this very strange image of like Sinestro the Infinite or something like that, right? Um, but you also have, uh, you have another inset panel here. You've got one panel. Here's the thing, two panels, uh, one to sort of do the setup and then the payoff. Uh, and you've made the inset panel so small and so insignificant. And then you've got all of this room here. Like you could have done this a million different ways. Um, my instinct would be to, uh, to take this whole thing here. Yeah. Just, I mean, this is fine, but I would just take it and turn it like this. Uh, this would be better. So you got, he, he's like uh, sort of diagonal in the comic. Uh, it's just a better, more exciting layout. And then, and then you could put the the Green Lantern logo, you know, behind him like over here or something like that. That way, you've got like all of this room, and you can have his have this bleeding up into here. You've got all this room to do the first panel. Uh, you've got way more room to draw like that first setup panel. Um, but this just makes, it's just a nicer, more dynamic layout here. Uh, it's more exciting. And then again, you're, you know, this, again, this, I don't even want to look at this. I don't even want to look at this little inset panel. I don't want to try to determine what it is. It's so small and it's clear that like, you know, uh, to you, like you didn't think it was that important. Uh, so uh, there you go. Uh, here's uh, here's Hot Girl, and uh, of course this guy right here. Uh, he was the artist uh, Ammon K. Uh, he drew the uh, the uh, book that I just reviewed, Lobo and Crush, whatever the Crush and Lobo. Good artist. Is this his work here? Is this his work, or is this like a different cover artist? I don't know. Uh, this looks okay. Doesn't look that great. I like the uh, I like the foreshortening on that. The mace. Uh, anyway, there we go. Oh, this movie. Uh, all right. Not bad. I mean, it's an okay comic book. It's just kind of like um, not uh, not very insightful. 
Uh, and um, I don't know. I mean, I'll just give it a like a I'll give it a two point five out of five. It's all right. You know, you might like it. The art is pretty good in the Green Lantern story. Uh, it, the Sinestro story is excrement. It really shouldn't even be there. Like, there's no point to it at all. And the art is bad, uh, which is something I rarely say. Uh, but anyway, that's my review of uh, Night Terror's Green Lantern. Let me know what you think of this uh, video. Let me know what you think of the comic. Uh, would you pick something like this up? Are you following Night Terror's? Uh, is there anything that's good out there? I'll, I'll I'll go read it. I'm you know I'm interested in in uh I've got a whole crate of comics over here still to do. I'm gonna try to review uh, all of them, including a bunch more Star Wars uh, books. Uh, let me know. Please like this video, share this video, always leave me a comment. I read all of the comments, uh, and then please uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, let's push back against uh, the algorithm, which by the way is not exactly rewarding. This is a labor of love doing these review videos because it's like. These videos do not get recommended. It's like uh, very few people do seem to care about uh, what DC and Marvel are doing these days in terms of comics. But I got to review. I got to I got to watch this whole thing go down. Now is not the time. Uh, now, <laughs> when things are this dire, now is not the time to stop reviewing these books. Now is the time to really review these books and watch what happens. Should be interesting. Uh, thanks, everyone. I'll see you again soon with another video. Follow All Take Caps care. Comics on Twitter or X or whatever at CyberFrogHD. And be sure to check out all our links in the description below.